Good morning. The project number is 14 and the project title is Water Leak Detection Using Neural Networks. My name is Vedashri Chafekar and I have with me Krupal Chaha and Shreya Sabu. The primary goal of the project is to develop a smart water technology to detect the presence of water leakages, which may be present in the water distribution system. This is done in the neural networks to provide a cost-effective solution, which leads to significant water savings. The project aims in leak detection analytics to de detect the leakages using fewer number of sensors. The water leak de detection model is as shown in the figure. The data set is obtained by simulating it on the EPNet software, which is used to model the water distribution system. It has 16 pressure nodes and 16 leak nodes. The leak data set contains leak values and response for the leaks of up to 5, with random sizes, sizes varying from 1 to 10. Similarly, the pressure values represent the pressure drop at sensor nodes due to the leakage considered at each point. The network architecture is as shown in the figure. The, the leak values and the pressure values are first, first pre-processed. They are then uh, given to the train test script block, which, which splits the data set into 8 is, 80 is to 20. Then the, we have used two models, SOM, which is self-organizing maps and the multi-layer perceptron model. Both of the models are trained on the data set and they are hyper-tuned uh, using different methods. The optimized model is the one which has the highest accuracy. Hi, myself Krupal Shah and I'll be discussing about self-organizing maps. To give you a brief introduction, so SOMs are introduced by Kohan and it is also known as Kohan Neural Networks. It's a type of an ANN that uses an unsupervised learning techniques to produce a low dimensional discretized representation of the input space. SOMs differ from other ANNs as they apply competitive learning for error connection as opposed to back propagation with gradient descent. And also it uses a neighborhood function to learn the topological properties of the input space. Generally, SOMs are used for unsupervised learning tasks, but recent developments have been made for creating supervised and unsupervised SOM. We develop SOM as a prototype model to see whether it can learn the topological properties of our water network structure. The main model is the model based on MLP, which will be explained by my colleague Shreya shortly. We implemented our supervised SOM based on the SUSI framework. The main idea behind the SUSI framework, the main idea behind, behind the supervised SOM is it is a fusion of two SOMs, one unsupervised, one supervised. The weights of the unsupervised SOM has the same dimension as the input data, whereas the weights of the supervised SOM has the same dimension as the target variable, which is the class. The results of the model has for, along with the hyperparameter tuning are as follows. I'll briefly explain the hyperparameters. The rows, ex, the rows is the number of rows in the SOM map, as the columns are the number of columns. And IU stands for number of iterations of the unsupervised uh, SOM. And similarly, NIS for the number of iterations of the supervised SOM. LRS, LRS stand for learning rate start, starting learning rate, and LRE similarly as the ending learning rate. As you can see, the accuracy increases as the complexity of the model increases generally, which can be also observed using this specific graph. So we can see that accuracy increases as the number of iteration or overall the complexity of the model increases. Hi everyone, I'm Shreya Sabu and I'll be briefing you on the multi-layer perceptron model that's been used. To reiterate a key points, we have 16 pressure sensor values 16 leak nodes, and the architecture used is as follows. We have three hidden layers and several other hyperparameters have been set as shown to your right. We have the mean squared error as the loss function, ReLU as the activation function, epoch size, batch size, everything is fixed for all the remaining slides as well. In this particular problem, we treat it as a regression problem and we try to regress and identify the leak value sizes. We have two evaluation metrics, accuracy and mean absolute error. We have chosen the threshold as zero, which means that every time we get a regressed value and if it's greater than zero, it's identified as a leak node. And if it's zero, it means it was not a leak node. In this way, we get an accuracy of about 93%. A mean absolute error of 0.24 indicates that the regressed values on an 
average was off by 0 0.24 from the actual test values. Here is a confusion matrix for our model. We have an accuracy of 93%, recall of 81%, and precision of 83%. Notice here that it's important for us to reduce the number of false negatives. Predicting a no leak when it's actually a leak will pose a serious threat. And therefore, recall is an important evaluation metric for our problem. I've included the confusion metric for each individual nodes. You may have noticed that node 3 and node 8 acts differently from the rest of the nodes because it's always predicted as no leak and in no situation is the leak predicted accurately. This demonstrates the famous dying ReLU problem because ReLU units can be fragile during training and when this happens, the gradient flowing through the unit will forever be zero from that point onwards. This can be tackled by using the leaky ReLU activation function. By assigning a small positive gradient for the negative inputs, we can address the problem of dying parts within the network. Keeping all of the hyperparameters and the model structure fixed, we use leaky ReLU as the activation function, and we observe that the evaluation metrics now shows a mean absolute error of 0 0.2, which is better than the previous rectified linear activation function. However, the accuracy has dipped by a small amount. Although this is the case, we still consider the leaky ReLU activation function to be better because the recall value has increased from 81% to 97.7%, thereby reducing the number of false negatives, which makes this model successful. Notice here now, node 3, node 8 does not perform poorly and there is no more the problem of the dying ReLU. We have tried setting threshold values from 0.1 through 0.9 and notice that we obtain the best accuracy at 0.9 threshold. In this particular case, other leak sizes from 2 to 10 has been correctly classified in almost all cases except a few outlier cases. Maybe leak sizes of uh, value one might have been misclassified, but all others are picked correctly, and so we have a high accuracy of 97%. So for the result part, as you can see, the SM model and the MLP model outperformed the base, baseline models, and they both achieved the high accuracy of 79% and 97.23% respectively. And from this, we can conclude that simple MLP model outperformed the complex SOM model. Thank you.